This tutorial will aim to give a basic introduction for users new to the Pufferfish plugin for Grasshopper. So what's Pufferfish? Pufferfish is a plugin that focuses on tweening different types of data in Grasshopper. We could think of the word tweening to mean morphing or blending one object or data type into another version of itself, kind of like the animal the plugin is named after. The plugin also contains a collection of more general tools for Grasshopper that may save you time in your workflow. Because of the enormous number of components in the plugin, there's no way I can cover it all in this tutorial, so instead I'll aim to treat this as a general introduction to how you might use the tool. We'll start by looking at tweening curves, then move to surfaces and meshes, before completing a final exercise looking at a more com complex twisted box algorithm using the plugin. So on my screen I've got a template file with some starting geometry that we'll be using to complete the tutorial. To access this file for free, just create a profile on our website, and you better log in and download the file. So before we get started with tweening, I just want to show an example of one of the many object manipulation tools that's available to um, us in, Fuff in Pufferfish. So I'm just going to firstly come over here and reference in this curve, just with a curve component right there. We've got that guy in. And what we're first going to use is something called the prude component. So let's go over to the Pufferfish plugin, which is here, and we'll come to our drop down menu, and we just want to grab the prude component, which is prude curve here. And what the prude component does is it tries to just remove all the sharp edges you've got in a piece of geometry. So I just want to basically um, flatten out or curve out these uh, hard edges of this star I've got. So I'm going to drop my curve into the prude curve component, and we don't see much going on straight away. Um, I just want to add a few parameters, so I might add something with a value of about 25 for the length, and that just straight away offsets our component. You can see already it's giving us a nice curved version of our base geometry. Um, we've got a few different blend types, which is how it creates that curvature, so I'm just going to create a slider between 0 and 1, um, and you can flick that over. I actually kind of like the curvature of number one, so which was the curvature output, not the tangency. And then for bulge, uh, it's asking for a number between zero and one, so uh, let's go zero is smaller than 0 0.50, which is smaller than one, and plug that guy into here, and that'll just enable us to control that bulge. I reckon I'll make that 0.75 for now. And I'll preview that guy off, and I might just hide... Um, that curve geometry there like that. Cool. So we'll group that guy and we'll call that bulge. Oops. Actually it would make more sense to call it prude, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and bake that guy because we're going to use him to create our first tweened object. So let's copy this curve upwards because what we're going to do is we're going to tween through three different um, curves here. So I'm actually going to scale this one in a little bit. And I might actually rotate him by 30 degrees as well. Or oh, maybe 25. I'm trying to get him into that middle. I'll just do it manually actually. Around there, just like that. And I might make him just a little bit smaller. And then this one here, I'm actually going to just rotate a little bit like that. And maybe just pull them out a little bit. So what we're going to try and do is create a blend between these curves using some of the tween curves tool available to us in Pufferfish. So if we come up to our curve tab on here, um, the main tween options are here at the top, and we're going to look at all three. So let's start with tween consecutive curves. I'm going to drop that onto the canvas. I'm going to create a curve component and reference in our curves. So I want to reference these in order from bottom to top. So I'm going to go set multiple curves. I'm going to select the bottom first, the middle, and then the top geometry and hit return. And let's just straight away go ahead and plug that guy into curve. So straight away we'll get something. We're getting um, a couple of objects tweening. So what is it? We're getting two that are being output. I might just create a panel so we can clearly see what that output is there. Um, and the way that it's basically creating where these tweens are happening has to do with our factor. And our factor is currently set to 0 0.5. So what it's doing is it's taking this first curve and this second curve and creating a um, kind of middle morphed version of the two 
which is represented at the 0 0.5. So that's our tween factor. Um, if we were to make that, you know, a value of 0 between um, 0 to 1, we could easily um, start at 0, and you'll see as we move up to 1, it goes to the top curve. So a value of 0 0.5 means that we get a tween in between these two, and then of course it's tweening between the top two as well. But what if we wanted to have multiple uh, curves, so not just one that goes in between them. We could create a range component, which will give us a list of numbers that sit between 0 and 1, because this base domain, just by a starting point, is set to 0 and 1. So I could go and create, you know, a number slider that sits between 0 and 100, and I'll plug that into range. Um, and what it'll do if I make it 37, for example, is it'll give me a series of um, even numbers all split up uh, that go from 0 to 1. So if I plug that into factor now, you'll see we get uh, a big tween coming through. And what it's doing is it's, so if I have that set, sit, uh, set to 30, it's creating 30 between the first two and 30 between the second two. That's specifically for the tween consecutive curves. And because this is parametric, we could go and adjust, you know, these curves in the middle, um, and that'll update quickly for us. So that's kind of a base intro to how this kind of tweening operation works in Pufferfish. Let's have a look at another uh, tween curves um, one. Let's look at the tween two curves here. So very specifically, it's asking for um, between two curves in particular. I'm just going to preview that guy off. So what I might do is I'll create a list item component, and I'm just going to grab these curves here, and we're just going to get item 1 and then item 2, so these two here, and we'll tween, in fact, actually, let's go between the top two, just so we get a full one. So we'll go from curve A to curve B here, and once again, we're getting, you know, um, a 0 0.5 factor by default, like this. Um, so I'll add our old range in so we get more of a tween, um, just like that, okay? What happens if we wanted a little bit more variation in our tween? What if perhaps we wanted to bunch a few of our curves up to the top and have kind of a more spaced out approach down the bottom? We could easily do that by manipulating the numbers coming out of range. Because they're set between 0 and 1, it's really easy for us to use something called the graph mapper in Grasshopper. So go and create a graph mapper, sorry, a graph mapper component and drop that on the canvas. Um, and I'm going to right click and change the graph type to a bezier type, just like this. So I'll go and um, plug my range into there, and then I'll plug uh, the output from that graph mapper into the factor. And what this will do is it'll enable us to be able to skew these range outputs. So if I go and drag this, you'll see I'm able to bunch some of those curves up to the top here. Similarly, if I go and drag these ones. So we can get quite a large skewing effect just by easily manipulating that graph mapper. I want to show you that it, like the problem that um, kind of comes up when we try and do that with the tween consecutive curve. So I'll plug that into here, and we'll preview that off. And we'll preview this guy back on. And what you'll see is it bunches basically towards one curve, then kind of spreads out to the middle, and then bunches back again uh, when we're doing this tween consecutive curves. And that's once again because what the tween consecutive curves is trying to do is it's trying to create 30 in between all of these outcomes. Um, so it's going to basically do this, you know, tweening for one double set of curves and then tweening for the next double set of curves, which doesn't really give us a very nice kind of tweening effect between all of the curves. So what if we wanted to do a more gradual tween all the way through all of these curves? In that case, we'd want to use the tween through curves component. So let's put that guy in here. We'll plug our curves in and we'll plug our factors in. I'm going to preview this off here. Uh, and then you'll see, rather than tweening from this guy to that guy, then uh, the middle one to the top one, we're actually getting a gradual tween through the entire thing. And we can actually uh, manipulate this a bit further to get like more of a curved tween in between these things. Uh, I'm going to create a number slider that's between 0 and 3, and we're going to experiment with the interpolation type. So we've got a base type of 0, but we can easily um, change that so we get more of a, you know, smooth curvature between these tweened objects, which, you know, enables us to create a much kind of uh, more graded approach with this tweening objects. We could increase our 
range so we get a little bit more of a complex outcome. And that gives you a bit of an understanding as how you kind of would go about creating the basic tweening uh, with curves in Pufferfish. So I might group these guys and we'll label that tween curves. And then the last little experiment I want to do is I want to just try and apply this to, you know, some kind of um, problem or task that you might face somewhere in the real world. So these um, tweened geometries to me uh, start to look a little bit like 3D printing paths. So what I want us to do now is try and simulate how we might apply this to uh, some 3D printing paths. So I'm actually going to, um, well, we'll start again. I'll create a base curve component and I'll go and re reference in multiple curves. So I'll go this guy, this guy, and this guy. Hit return. I might preview this off for now. And I'm going to create a um, tween through curves component here. Put that guy in there. And we'll create another range. We'll create 0, 50, 100. So we've got some nice steps in between. Oops, put that into steps. Plug that range into factor, and um, I might copy this number slider actually here so we can get that nice interpolation going through our curves just like that. In fact, let's get a graph mapper on so we get um, a slightly graded effect. Just like that. Looking good. So when um, a 3D printer is operating, generally what will happen is the 3D printer will go around a layer complete its loop and then it'll jump up to the next layer and go around again and then jump up to the next layer and so on and so forth. So the way that we could go about doing that is basically uh, we could go and divide these curves into a certain number of points. I'm actually going to make it about 200 points. We could go a bit bigger so I'll just make that number slider have a range of up to a thousand. Something like this. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to cull um, at an index. And the indices that I want to cull, I'm going to do a bit of a list, so I'll just create a panel, is number one, zero, and number one. And I'll just change that to multi-line data here and plug that guy into indices. And that's basically going to get rid of uh, a couple of these points here. We could add, you know, 0, 1, 2 to get rid of an extra one. In fact, maybe we do just because we're not getting rid of too many here. And that gives us a new set of points. And basically the order of our list right now is we have all of these points on one branch of our data tree. Then the next branch is the second layer here and so on and so forth. So if we go and flatten this list, we've now got a flat list of points that looks like this, something with gaps in it. And we could easily just go and create a polyline that would represent our 3D printing toolpath. And you'll see what happens now, if I preview off our tween, is that, I might actually also just hide our geometries, is that our toolpath, preview that off too, jumps up um, along this curve. When you're creating 3D printed geometries, sometimes what's really helpful is the ability to actually control where this jump occurs. You want to control where your seam line is. And in Pufferfish, there's a really great uh, tool that allows us to um, realign where the seam is for any curves in our geometry. So basically, when you ever have a closed curve in Rhino, it has something called a seam, which is its starting point. Um, which basically is sitting here in all of our geometries. So we're going to go and try and adjust this. And we're going to do this by using a tool in Pufferfish called Curve Align, um, oh sorry, Curve Align Curve Seams. Uh, it's down here, Curve Align Curve Seams. So we're basically going to align the seams of our tween geometry to a curve that we're going to draw. So we'll put these curves in here like that. And then I'm going to reference a new curve into here. And I'm actually just going to draw a line straight up like that, that's taller or bigger than my 3D printed geometry. And I'm going to go set one curve. And we'll apply that in as our guide. And you'll see what it does straight away is it gives us a collection of points as to where our seam is going to be reiterated. So if I move this kind of closer to our geometry, it gives me the opportunity to kind of control exactly where that seam is going to be. And if I go and reference that in now, 
that jump that we're programming in over here is actually occurring wherever um, I'm manipulating these seam lines. So I could go and move this over here perhaps. Uh, we get a bit of an error in where I've put it because I haven't put it in the greatest position. But you could also start to rebuild that curve, uh, you know, give it five control points and really start to manipulate that geometry. So we get a really nice seam line. I might prove that on for a second so we can see exactly where it is. Oops. We'll move this guy here like that and you just want to get like a nice neat seam line if you're ever using 3d printing technology like that but it's a good little tool that's available in pufferfish that makes that seam line manipulation a lot easier than um, having to write your own custom seam generating algorithm in grasshopper so it's easy to have a little play around until you get something that you're kind of happy with i'll just move that one more there we go looks good so we'll group that guy, and I'll just call it 3D Printing Logic. Okay, next let's take a look at how we might go about tweening surface geometry. So I'm going to move over here to these two surfaces um, sitting to the side, and I'm going to reference them into Grasshopper. Let's create two surface containers. So I'm going to create one surface for the bottom surface, and then one for the top surface, just there. Cool. And if we come up here to our um, surface tab in Pufffish, um, we've got some very similar uh, components to what we saw in the curved geometry. We're just going to have a look at the tween two surfaces one um, for this one, because you kind of get a feel for the different types of tweening just from the curves one. So I'm going to click on tween two surfaces and drop that onto the canvas. And then very similarly to what we did just before, let's plug those guys in here and we'll create a range. And, you know, kind of between 0 and 10, I don't think we'll go as intense as what we were doing just before. Um, and basically, if your surfaces are aligned properly, um, and they're kind of reparametized in a similar way, you'll be able to easily tween between those surfaces just there. Um, so one thing that we can do that's a little bit more complex uh, with surfaces, we can actually use some guide curves to affect the way that our surfaces are tweened. So if we come through here, there's another extra option called tween two surfaces along curve, which didn't actually exist in our curve tweenings earlier. So I'm going to click on that guy. In fact, I might just group this and we'll just call that tween two surfaces. And I might make a copy of those surfaces so we're not re-referencing. And I'll put that surface in here and that surface in here. Might copy that range as well drop that into factor and basically what we could go and do is we can draw a couple of lines that will serve as guide curves so I'm going to go and draw a line from this guy to this edge here and then another one from here to here and I might rebuild them as well actually let's rebuild them so they have uh, five point counts just like that and then I'm going to reference these curves in so I'll go curve and I'll go set one curve make a copy of that and set the other curve. So we've got both of those curves referenced in. I'll make that guide one and that one guide two. Just want to make sure I'm getting that right and make sure the direction's heading in the boat right in the both way. Yeah, it looks okay, but we are getting a little bit of a strange error. And my hunch is that that error is actually caused by the order you put these surfaces in. So if we Flip them around. Oh, actually, I think it's actually caused just by this geometry being previewed. Oh, that looks pretty good anyway. So we're getting a nice tween by the looks of it. I think it was just previewing this geometry, my bad. Um, but now if we go and manipulate these curves, you'll see we're able to kind of affect how that tween is happening in kind of a more interesting way. So it can bulge out based on the way our curve's working or it can kind of be pushed inwards a little bit. So you get a little bit more control over the manipulation of how that tween's working so it's not so linear with the surfaces. So that's kind of a basic intro to, you know, surfaces as well. It's very similar to the curves we had at the start. I'm just going to group that guy, and I will just call it tween surfaces along curves. And the next thing we could start to look at is... Um, I might preview this off as well, is how we might go and um, deal with some mesh tools 
in Pufferfish. I'm just going to hide that geometry because we might come back to the origin here. So um, rather than getting straight into tweening with the mesh geometries, I want to take a look at another handy tool or interesting tool in Pufferfish called uh, the Voxel Mesh Tool. Now the Voxel Mesh Tool basically lets us quickly create pixelized versions of any mesh geometry we might have in Grasshopper. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start with a mesh sphere. Um, I might make its radius about 100, so it's a bit bigger. And we'll give it a U and V count. We want it to be a bit high because the voxel mesh component relies on lots of vertices. So if we go and deconstruct uh, that mesh, oops, deconstruct mesh, you'll see we get lots of points. Basically, if we drag that to a lower res, you don't have as many points. So for the voxel mesh, it's usually better to have lots of points um, in that. Um, the voxel mesh component should just be under the mesh tab. Uh, it's right there, so we'll click on that. Voxel mesh. And we see the kind of inputs it's going to take straight away. Um, let's make the X, Y, and Z sizes all regular. So I'm just going to make them 10, 10, and 10. Like that. And then the points are going to be these guys. And by default, it's going to snap to the X, Y plane. Uh, what we can easily do, though, is we can kind of manipulate that axis. In fact, I might just quickly show you what that's looking like. So it's creating like a pixelized version of our um, geometry here. You could, you know, view it a little bit more easily with a custom preview. There we go. Now you can see it a lot more clearly. Um, preview that guy off. And basically, as we kind of, you know, increase the number of points, we'll be able to close off a lot of those holes that we're getting in the geometry until we get um, a more closed off pixelized version of our mesh. Essentially what it's doing is it's taking all of these points and trying to create a cube or voxel around of it so you get this pixelized version of the geometry at the end. But as I was saying, we could also try and manipulate that base plane. So I'm going to create an XY base plane. And I'm going to rotate based on an axis. Um, so rotate axis here. And the geometry we're going to rotate is that XY plane that we have at the start. I might just preview this guy for a sec. Uh, my XY plane's pretty small, so I might just make my preview plane size a bit bigger. There we go. And we can go ahead and change that guy to degrees and just rotate based on you know a 360 degree angle. And, you know, as we rotate that plane, it will actually rotate how our voxelized mesh is applied. So I'm going to preview this back on. Oops. Preview on. Plug this plane in here. And you'll notice as I go and rotate this, you can create your voxel mesh um, at any kind of angle that you like based on a plane. And it'll still go ahead and compute uh, where that base mesh is. Uh, so that's kind of a brief intro on how you could use that voxel mesh. Um, another potential way to do this if you're starting with a geometry that isn't as you know controllable based on its vertex count is you could populate the geometry um, like this um, by basically placing that in and maybe giving it a count of like 2,000. This is a really slow component though, like you'll see when I plug that in that it takes a little while to compute, but that could also serve as the starting point. So if you wanted to put a custom mesh type in here, you could use that populate geometry. So we might group that and we'll label that as voxel mesh. Cool, so I want to scoot over to this piece of geometry over here, which is a little um, meshed cross geometry that I created earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a component called Displace Mesh, which actually allows us to kind of morph or transform um, a mesh geometry in Pufferfish based on something like an attractor point. Um, so I might um, just reference this mesh in first, and we'll go and set one mesh here. Um, and then the next thing I want to get up, if we go to the mesh tab again, we want to go ahead and find that displace mesh component. And if we come down here, it's just there. And we just want to see the input. So we have a mesh input, and then we have a distances input. And basically what that's going to do is we're going to put input the mesh, and every little vertice on our mesh is going to be displaced by a certain amount. So we can easily set up an attractor relationship to do this. Um, I'm going to go and deconstruct my mesh, like this, 
And then we're going to do a distance. And I might create a point and reference that in. So we go set one point. So he's in there, and we're going to measure from that point to each of these vertices, which will give us a nice distance. We can then use um, a little handy tool that's available in PuffFish called Reparametize Numbers. Um, so if you come up to the Number tab um, and click on Reparametize Numbers, it's actually an easier way to do reparams, which is really good. So you just basically put in the numbers, which are all our distances, and if you've done attract points before, this will make sense. And it just spits them out in a zero to one domain, which means you don't have to find the original domain here, which is sometimes really um, handy and can save you a lot of time. You can also really quickly invert them. So I could go and invert that, and then the larger numbers will become really small, so they'll be close to zero, and the smaller numbers will be close to one, basically. Um, so what's going to happen essentially is if you're really, really close to this and you've got a small distance, you'll um, deform more and more. The last thing I want to do is do a multiplication component. And we're just going to multiply this guy by about, I don't know, 25. Oops, a bit bigger than that. And that's going to serve as our distance multiplier. So the largest um, displacement we're going to have is about 25 units. So I'll plug that into distances, and you'll see what happens straight away. Wherever um, this point is, basically our mesh is going to um, displace itself or move itself based on the normal of its um, base geometry. So we get like a very transformed version of this mesh output. Um, so I'm going to group those guys. And I'm going to just label it as displaced mesh. And I might actually bake one of these. Hit bake. And I'm going to move it over here. And I might rotate it as well. Because the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to move back into our tweening. I'm just going to preview that off. And we're going to tween between these two uh, mesh geometries that we've got here. So very similar to um, what we've been looking at so far with other tweens. We firstly just want to reference our meshes in. So we'll create a mesh component and go set multiple meshes like so. And then we can come up to the mesh tab in Pufferfish and we're just going to uh, tween through meshes here. Plug our meshes in and it's going to create our one at 0 0.5 as we know um, it has done before. And then we might just create another range, 0, 10, 20 maybe, whatever you like. Plug those steps into the factor, like so. And then you get a nice tween between all of these geometries. So you're able to tween between these two meshes that we just kind of created earlier. Uh, we could change the interpolation type, of course, so we could go... 0 to 3, have a look at the effect that it has on our tween. Nothing really with the meshes, so we won't worry about that. And of course you could add a graph mapper if you wanted as well. Change it to a bezier. And basically this will kind of just affect the location of those guys. So maybe we pull it back towards our base geometry just because it's getting a bit bunched up towards the end there. Like that. That looks pretty good. And then you get a nice tweened output between those meshes. So I'm going to group that guy and call it tweened meshes. Great. So Pufffish also enables us to create um, mesh geometries from base surfaces. So I could go ahead and um, create a surface component again and reference this surface in. Um, and what I could do with that is I could come up to the um, mesh tab again and create um, a, a mesh geometry from this surface using the parameter surface mesh. And we'll plug, put that guy down. Uh, and basically, it's going to ask for some parameters U and V. So this is another point where we can use our range components. And I'm going to grab one of those guys. Um, I might create, uh, in fact, let's just plug those in and just get a feel for what they're doing. So you can't quite see what's happening, um, but if I were to create, um, in fact, I think if I turn on my preview mesh edges, you might have it on already, you're about to see the type of mesh topology you're getting from this. So if we created a graph mapper, we can actually manipulate the topological 
kind of build up of this mesh output. So I'll plug that into U and V again, like that. And if we um, adjust this, you can kind of bunch up where those kind of edges are and distort how your kind of mesh is. So you get a larger face in one corner and much smaller faces in another corner. And we could actually go and extend this logic a little bit and um, we could create you know, a second one based on this bottom surface here, like that. And I might hide all of this stuff and preview the surfaces off. And then we could essentially continue the logic we've been using with our tweening and tween between these two meshes. So I go up to the mesh tab here and I could tween two meshes. Mesh A, Mesh B. Uh, once again, we could create a range and we could copy the graph mapper over as well. And suddenly we're getting a pretty interesting tween through all these different types of geometries that look something like that. Might just make it a little bit more subtle than what it currently is so we can get a few more in like that. So I might group that and we'll call that tween through two meshes. And this is an important step because we're going to go and use this to create an even more complex um, ge geometry type. Um, using one of the more powerful set of tools I think in the puffer fish um, toolkit. And that tool is called the Twisted Box Components or the Twisted Box Transformation Tools in PuffFitch. They're perhaps some of the most powerful and fun tools that I think we could use um, in this plugin. They basically allow us to tween, transform, and morph all types of interesting geometries. Uh, so we're going to use these tween meshes we have here to create something really complex um, with this kind of base component that I've got sitting over here on the side. So just a heads up, I'm going to also make use of the Weaver Bird plugin in this demonstration. You don't necessarily need it to complete this little demo, but I just want to create a smooth geometry with the final outcome, and if you've got it installed, um, that'd be great. So um, I'm actually going to make a copy of all of this, because rather than redoing it, we might as well just go and use it as it is. And we'll come over to the Twisted Box uh, components, and we're looking for the Twisted Box Consecutive Meshes tool. So that's sitting right here. There's obviously a lot of twisted box components and throughout this tutorial series, we'll take a bigger look at a few of these tools and how we can make really good use of them. Um, but right now we're just gonna look at the twisted box consecutive meshes there. Drop that in here. Um, as we've always done, it's a tweening exercise. So we can basically go ahead um, and actually, instead of tweening this guy, we can put this one in first and this one in second, like that. Um, I might just preview off this so we can get a better look at what it's doing. So what it's uh, trying to do here is it's trying to create a um, collection of boxes that tween through our base meshes and they're following that topology. So I'm going to plug in the graph map arrange that we copied earlier so we can get more divisions in between that tween plug that into parameters W, you can see like that. And for those of you who don't quite understand what a twisted box is, it's essentially a transformation tool that is going to enable us to morph any type of geometry and stick it into these little boxes we've created. So we've gone and created 343 twisted boxes in this little array here. And we're gonna grab this geometry over here and we're gonna morph it into each one of these boxes that we see. So let's reference this geometry in. I'm going to create a mesh component and go set one mesh and reference him in. And to morph them into the boxes, we need to create our box around this geometry itself. So let's create a bounding box component there. And that's going to serve as the box that encases our geometry. Now, basically the way that I've designed um, this component is that it's going to tessellate. And I'm just going to turn all our grass off, off for a second and demonstrate this. If I copy this on top of itself, you see how it continues its tessellation. Similarly, if I copy it you know, to the side or up here, it's going to tessellate itself over and over again. And that's very deliberately um, that I've modeled it like this. 
basically it's going to sit in each of these boxes and it's going to tessellate through all of these twisted geometries and hopefully give us a really complex outcome whereby the base geometry that we're using actually kind of dissolves and morphs into the greater whole that we're getting out in Pufferfish. So to put this, um, sorry, to put this mesh into these boxes, we need to use the box morph component, which isn't actually a um, puffer fish um, component, it just sits in your transformation tab there in Grasshopper. And the geometry that we want to morph is this mesh. The reference box that we want to mesh is this container that's containing our current geometry. And then the target box is all of these boxes that we've created using the twisted box component. So we'll drop that over there. And you can see straight away that our little piece of geometry has gone and morphed itself into all of our twisted boxes in quite an interesting way. So you're getting a pretty complex um, piece of geometry coming through here. So the next little step that I want to do um, is I want to join all of these. So I'm going to use the mesh join component like that. So they become one mesh rather than 343 separate meshes. So I'm getting an invalid mesh, which is a little bit annoying, but um, that's okay. And then I'm going to use Weaver Bird. I'm going to use the Catmull Clark subdivision tool. Um, how many levels do I want? I probably want to have... 0 to 3, but I might have 2 actually, 0, 2, and then we'll give the option of 3. So we'll plug that guy into there. And do I want to smooth the naked edges? No, I want to fix the naked edges, I think. So we will um, copy that and we'll make smooth naked edges a value of 1. Plug those mesh curves in. And what that'll do is it'll just smooth out some of those geometries we've got here and output our final mesh. Um, I might just unify the normals because I'm pretty sure if we preview this we'll get all these weird intersections. See, see how we get this obvious change in geometry here? If we unify all the um, faces by, by using um, mesh unify normals, um, it should basically get rid of that awful piece of geometry there. It's just turning all the faces um, to make sure they're facing the same way. And then we get this really complex geometry. Might just um, disable all the stuff we've done before this. Sorry. Oops. Disable. There we go. So we can get a really good look at this guy. Oops. Preview on. Zoom. And if we go into rendered mode... We've gone and created a really complex piece of geometry from a very series um, of simple steps just using Pufferfish. So you can already start to see some of the potential of this um, plugin and its ability to quickly manipulate geometries and make them much more complicated than they could be. Uh, in future tutorials, we're going to take a look at um, some of these twisted box components in more depth and see what types of other complexities we can draw out using the Pufferfish plugin.